Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Today I thought I would do something very special and different by recording this video with voiceovers and montages. As you know, it's been really stormy, so I had a lot of trouble putting up lighting, so I have done it in as much natural light as possible. I hope you enjoy. The first book that I'd like to talk about that I'm currently reading is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in a series called The Last Hours. I'd like to tell you the synopsis of this first before going into my own opinions about it. Cordelia Carstairs is a shadow hunter, a warrior trained since childhood to battle demons. When she travels to London, she encounters childhood friends, Jane and Lucy Herondale and is drawn into their world of glittering ballrooms and supernatural salons. All the while, she must hide her secret love for James, who is sworn to marry someone else. But Cordelia's new life is blown apart when demon attacks devastate London. Trapped in a city, Cordelia and her friends discover that a dark legacy has gifted them with incredible powers. So, coming to my personal opinions, I am liking it, but not loving it. And I'm really confused with the bloodline relationships. So basically, I have to keep looking up the family trees in between reading so that I do not miss out on anything. There are just so many cousins and friends and everything and I'm having a hard time catching up. I also have a problem with the arbitrary info dumping about how Seraph Blades and Iradzi's work when I've already come across these in information in her other book. And one of the most annoying things that I've come across in the book so far is how Anna Lightwood's enigmatic and scandalous personality has been talked about so many times throughout so many perspectives without proving them so far has been a constant annoyance to me and I really hope it gets better. But let's talk about the class half full which is, I, which is that I love the reminders of the small things like Will's horses that is Balios and Santos. I also really love how she puts certain traits of Wills into his son James, like the sense of humor. You know, like you just feel this connection and it's so real. I love how her women are always fleshed out and not leaning on particular, on just one particular feminine quality like stitching and piano and all and also doing other things like training where Cordelia and Lucy are basically training together. And overall the plot has begun to span a little faster, so I am completely absorbed in it knee deep. So the next book that I'd like to talk about is The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the first book in the Eldest Curses series. So I was already warned about the plot that it's not that great, but it's still worth the read as we see Alec and Magnus build and grow in their relationship and I am completely seeing that as I'm reading this book and I also really love the cameos of other characters from other series of the Shadowhunter worlds. Love and humor and romance and Alec and Magnus's banter is also other factors that really make the book very enjoyable and Alec being the best human by being extremely kind and flawed at the same time and acknowledging his privilege as a shadow hunter and aware of his parents past is one of my favorite characters in the Mortal Instruments series. It also has a detective mystery vibe that has been making me grab this book almost all the time. And that's all I have to say about this book. So the next book that I'd like to talk about is Sophie's World by Jostine Garo. It is a history of philosophy through fiction and I have not come very far in this book. I generally only read this when I'm feeling very low or extremely bored or very inquisitive. And just like Sophie Amundsen, who is also an inquisitive 15-year-old girl who lives with her mother, a mundane and ignorant personality who is just surviving the regular life to take care of her daughter. Sophie starts receiving letters anonymously addressed to someone named Hill, and she thinks it is her father. But if it were, why would he write his daughter's name wrong? Her father rarely visits and owns an oil industry or something. This book leaves me really confused and fuzzy a lot of times and a lot of information is gobbled up too fast but that is my mistake. 
There are however some very creepy aspects in this book that makes me cringe with disgust and fear from time to time. So I'll read you a part which really disturbed me which is when uh, he writes Sophie a letter after Sophie almost catches him being near her mailbox. In case you should get any ideas, let me make it quite clear that you must never attempt to check up on me. One day we will meet, but I shall be the one to decide when and where. And that's final. You are not going to disobey me, are you? That part sounds a little creepy because she is a young girl who is being written to by an older man, old enough to be her grandfather, and she has a right to know who he is by spying on the mailbox, waiting to catch a glimpse of him, who in turn notices her, later trying to catch the anonymous person, red-handed with a harmless intention, and sends her a letter telling her not to disobey his rules. That part honestly gave me a really ech feeling, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? So the last book I want to talk about is 1984 by George Orwell. This is a very popular modern classic which is also a dystopian novel. It is based on this futuristic totalitarian society which is brainwashed to behave and think in a certain way with someone called Big Brother always watching. This book was actually published in 1949 as a prediction of what the government is going to seem like in the future. And oh my god, it did. The mass surveillance, the omnipresent government, effects of perpetual war and propaganda, the different one trope, you know. It's a timeless classic and can be relevant throughout a lifetime. I see it now. The other dystopian novels are actually inspired by this. The one who rebels, the evil corrupt government. I see it as an inspiration indeed. Our protagonist is Winston Smith. And he is torn between just surviving and rebelling a little and slowly starts to see that he is not alone in this chaos. I am actually uh, buddy reading this and I have only read until page 123 out of 326 because me and my friend have slightly different reading speeds. But at this moment with this book, we are taking it slow because we're having a great time. This is actually a really read for me. And the first time I vaguely remember reading it, I was extremely disturbed and I left it. Uh, I think that maybe I was too young and that is why I left it. But now it's captivating me and I want to be disturbed because that is just the masochist I am. Hello, I hope you watched this video. And I'm so sorry that I had to delay it by a whole two days and I just hated it but I thought why not do something special for you guys and do it in the in this montage way with an over voice and I hope you like it please let me know